Welcome to our review on air pollution. So first thing we're going to look at here then is this whole thing called the carbon cycle. So what we're really looking at here is what happens to carbon on Earth. So we need to remember a couple of key things which I've summarized in the box to the right for you. The first one is what processes make carbon dioxide and release it into the atmosphere. And we've got two we've got to remember there, respiration and combustion. The third process we need to remember is the one that's going to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and that is photosynthesis. So if we have a look at the diagram there, what we can see is we start off at the top with carbon dioxide in the air. That's going to be removed from the atmosphere by photosynthesis carried out by plants, and it will be converted into the carbon compounds in the plants. From there, we've got a few things that could happen. Our plants are going to be carrying out respiration. At that point, carbon dioxide gets released back to the air. We may also see those plants dying, becoming buried, and over millions of years becoming fossil fuels. And at that point, we end up at the bottom bit there, which is our carbon compounds in fossil fuels. Or our plants may well be eaten by other animals and therefore be converted into carbon compounds in animals. Now, those animals could also die, become buried, and over millions of years turn into fossil fuels as well. And once we've got those fossil fuels, once we dig them up and burn them through the process of combustion, we're releasing carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. And just remember that the animals are also going to be carrying out respiration and returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So the kind of question you're likely to see on this is where they're going to give you an outline of the carbon cycle and they're going to ask you to label on those three key processes. All you need to do to get that right is just spot the arrow that goes from carbon dioxide in the air to plants. That one is our photosynthesis. If it's going from a living thing back to the carbon dioxide in the air, it's respiration. And if it's going from fossil fuels to the air, then that will be our combustion. One thing to bear in mind is that when we're thinking about the carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere today, what we're seeing is that they're increasing. Now, that's mainly down to the increased combustion of the fossil fuels on the planet today. One thing we need to consider at this point is this whole thing of global warming. So when we're talking about global warming, we're referring to the increasing temperature of the Earth as a result of the increased amounts of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Now, what we'll find is one of the main greenhouse gases we're going to consider is carbon dioxide. So basically what we're seeing is, as the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are increasing, then the temperature of the Earth is also increasing. So what we're finding is, it's down to human activity that we're seeing this increase in carbon dioxide. So one of these things that's actually going to lead to this increase in carbon dioxide is the fact that as the population increases, we're going to be using more electricity. So think about all the extra lights and all the extra heaters and everything like this that people living in houses are going to use. So that leads to increased electricity production, which is generally from fossil fuel power plants. We've also got more people driving around or using transportation, and again, they burn fossil fuels. And finally, when we've got more people, we've got to find somewhere to actually put them to live. So to do this, what we're actually doing is cutting down large areas of our forests and trees, etc. And in that process of deforestation, we're going to be removing those trees and making space for those houses. So deforestation actually has a double whammy because number one, we're taking away the plants that would normally be carrying out photosynthesis and removing carbon dioxide. And that means that we're going to also see this increase in carbon dioxide because one of the common ways that we do this is by cutting them down and burning them. So we're releasing carbon dioxide there through the combustion of those trees as well. If we think about pollutants, what we're referring to there is a substance that's released into the environment that may damage living things. So these pollutants might be of the air, they could be of the water. So it's any substance that may damage living things that we're releasing into the environment. Now, the first one we need to consider is carbon monoxide, which we've already mentioned when we looked at our incomplete combustion. Because what we find is any time we've got a fuel that we're going to be burning, but we don't have sufficient oxygen available, incomplete combustion will occur and carbon monoxide is one of those products. 
We're concerned about that because carbon monoxide is dangerous to us as living things because it's a poisonous gas and if you inhale enough of it, then it can lead to death. Another thing we need to consider is nitrogen. Now, what we find is nitrogen and oxygen can react in that really high temperature and pressure environment that we find inside car engines to make NOx. Now, NOx just stands for nitrous oxides. Now, the nitrous oxides can have two serious effects for us. First one is it can cause acid rain, which can cause a lot of damage to trees and living things. Second one is that it can react with other atmospheric pollutants, particularly in sunlight, and then it's gonna make this stuff called photochemical smog, which you can see in the pictures at the bottom there. Now, if we've got large amounts of photochemical smog and you're breathing it in, it can lead to breathing problems. In our fossil fuels, we've also got small amounts of sulfur. So when we actually burn that fossil fuel, the sulfur present in them is gonna react with oxygen to make sulfur dioxide. Now, sulfur dioxide is gonna travel up into our atmosphere and then it's gonna dissolve in the water in our clouds. And as a result of that, we're gonna generate our acid rain as it falls. Now, acid rain's a pretty significant problem to us because it's going to have a few damaging effects, not only on our man-made structures, but also on living things. So what we're gonna find is it can erode stonework and corrode metals if it falls on them. So that's our buildings that could be damaged. And if it falls on living things like trees, it can kill them, as you can see in the bottom right picture there. And if it accumulates in lakes and rivers, we can actually end up changing the pH there to the significant proportion so that that actually means that it becomes too acidic for things like our fish to live there. And so we can actually see entire lakes of fish dying as a result of it becoming too acidic for them as a result of acid rain. In terms of how we can control these pollutants then, one of the key things that we now have in our cars is something called a catalytic converter. So we fit these catalytic converters onto the vehicle exhausts and what it actually does is it's going to have a reaction with the carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides. So those two are products that we make during the combustion of our fossil fuel in the engine. And what we're going to do is react the carbon monoxide and the nitrogen oxide to make nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So what we're doing here is reducing two problematic gases. So the carbon monoxide, which is obviously the poisonous one, is reduced and changed into carbon dioxide. Not problem free in itself, but better than the poisonous carbon monoxide to us. And the nitrogen oxide, which would have caused our acid rain, is being converted into the nitrogen, which is that inert gas that's not going to react with anything that makes up 78% of our atmosphere. So I've given you the balanced symbol equation there as well, which they may ask you to use on your exam at the same time. So just be wary of the word and symbol equations there, and just remember that catalytic converters are there to control the pollutants.